Hello everyone. Welcome to today's news analysis. We are doing the Indian Express Papers Chandigarh edition. Now today's news comprises of the deteriorating law and order situation in Haryana. Likewise, Manipur is there in the news. Now with reference to Manipur, Supreme Court is hearing the Manipur issue and uh, this has been covered in the editorial section. Moving on, we have a news concerning Punjab, specifically to Punjab, where there is a public accounts committee. So the state legislative assembly has a public accounts committee, which has which recommended that farm subsidy on power and water should be checked. It should be taken away from big farmers. Now, if we just set aside Punjab, this issue is very, very important and this concerns the whole of India. So this has to be covered. So we have done a bit more research on this topic. Now, next one is concerning Article 370. So 370 is still there in the constitution, but it has now been made inoperative. So this change to the status of Article 370 is being heard in the Supreme Court. So we'll cover the issues that have been talked about and overall how this 370 was changed. Moving on to the editorial and opinion section, like I told you, Manipur Supreme Court. Next is Twain must meet, right? So this is the title actually. This is simply talking about the upcoming delimitation exercise. So delimitation means uh, delimiting or defining the constituencies. So delimitation will take place in the year 2026. So the southern states are concerned that their share in the parliament is going to come down. Why? Because over the years, last delimitation was in 1971. So over the years, delimitation has not taken place and uh, the southern states have been able to control their population. Population growth has been, has come down. While in the northern states, the population has gone up, especially UP and Bihar. Now, since the parliamentary seats are allocated based on population, Lok Sabha seats, Rajya Sabha seats, so the share of southern states is going to come down. That is the main concern. Then there is an article concerning Himalayan ecology and developmental activities, which is affecting uh, the settlements uh, of Himalaya. Here we are talking about the Joshi Math. Coming to the international section, uh, there is a news about Russia attacking Danube port and indictment of Trump, indictment of Trump with reference to attempts to change election results. Moving on to the economy section, we'll be covering the digital personal data protection bill. Basically, it is telling us about the special exemptions and special powers given to the central government in the upcoming bill. The bill is yet to be tabled in the parliament. We are having the monsoon session of parliament. Yesterday, there was a massive fall in the stock prices. So that has been mentioned as to why it had happened. Now coming to the news. So Haryana issue, I think more or less is clear, right? What all happened over there. So we just will be just focusing on the headlines some images, I think that is self-explanatory. Coming to the next article, this is about the farmer issue that we were talking about. So public accounts committee of Punjab Vidhan Sabha. You must have studied about public accounts committee with reference to the parliament, which looks into the issue of uh, finances of the government. So if parliament can have it, as well as the state legislative assemblies can also have it, they also need it. So this committee recommended that there should be metered power connections. At the present time, farm sector, be it anywhere in the country, rural sector, uh, power supply is uninterrupted. Uh, sorry, not uninterrupted, it is unmetered. They do not pay the bills because it is unmetered. 
so powers uh, uh, the power connections should be metered even if you don't charge bill it should be metered because then we will know how much consumption is being made so how much the distribution companies have to be paid next is no subsidy should be given to big farmers and third point which is not mentioned in the heading it is saying that there should be metering of all agricultural tube wells so tube wells should also be metered so that we know how much water is being consumed tube wells are used to extract ground water and if these tube wells are near the canal network in that case it should be disconnected logical because water can be drawn from the canal so there is no new need of the tube well okay now let us look at these topics one by one so one we are talking about the farm subsidy and uh, we are talking about the power and water second then we are talking also about the big farmers the big farmers should not be getting subsidy that is logical now what is the breakup of big farmers small farmers marginal farmers so in our country overall let's look at from country point of view only in our country 82% of the farmers belong to small and marginal farmers so this is the categorization of uh, farms this is from the pib so small and marginal that is a land up to 2 hectares the small and marginal farmers so this is 82% right and uh, big farmer has been taken as person who has 10 hectare and above but in the case of punjab they are talking about medium is also coming under big farmer people farmers having land more than 5 hectare has been defined as big farmer in context of punjab okay so you can use these terms small and marginal farmers in your answer writing how much percentage is there so that will help you with your answer writing help improve the quality of your points now coming to the issue of subsidy so first of all the power supply is unmetered so you can use as much as you want so this is with rural india and mainly the power is used for extraction of water right so extraction of water now here we have again have we have one thing that because of the power you know this power being unmetered no accountability of the power being used it is leading to losses of the distribution companies the companies which supply electricity so in india's case we have 20% of transmission and distribution loss which is highest in the world so we are just talking about the power right now okay now these distribution companies obviously they are buying powers from power generators and giving it to the end consumer so they are not able to recover that money right they are having massive amount of losses so in this case obviously it is affecting the financial health of these companies and it is also affecting the ability of the distribution companies to help uh, to invest in infrastructure improving the infrastructure therefore we have more power cuts so so yes so this one now to deal with the issue of power sector we have a number of schemes so one we have deen dayal upadhyay gramin jyoti yojana which provides for electrification in rural india and it says that there should be separate feeder for rural and urban areas so with having by having a separate feeder for rural and urban india there will be clear cut idea as to how much of is going from rural going to rural and accordingly money can be paid to the distribution companies by the government okay so this is the scheme the india lopadhyay gramin jyoti yojana next we have the issue of water right water extraction power is being used to run the tube wells to extract water so with the and good amount of water being extracted it is leading to ground water depletion 
it is leading to unsustainable farm practices for instance cultivation of paddy in semi arid punjab punjab haryana region and because of this obviously you know more and more water is being used so it is leading to depletion further with the ground water table coming down there is more exposure to heavy metals like mercury arsenic etc and therefore there is a greater risk for people to get infected with non communicable diseases of serious nature like cancer etc now talking about water consumption it is believed that 80% of water usage goes to agriculture so 4/5 or 80% is the same thing now here again with reference to tube wells and sustainable use of power there is a scheme known as pm kusum pradhan mantri kisan urja evam uthan mahabhiyan yojana so its idea is to provide energy and water security to farmers enhance their income de dieselize the farm sectors they'll be giving them pumps which run on solar electricity solar power so this is the document on pm kusum faqs on the same then i have in uh, i have taken out the pib for farm sector so what all subsidies are given so that also you may refer i'll share the link in the uh, comment section this is the economic survey from where i said that 20% loss is borne by the transmission and distribution companies discom companies so this 20% loss is for whole of nd overall right not just for the farm sector overall so this includes farm also i want you to read this article issues in power subsidy and farm distress uh, i have shared this on my telegram channel also so it is there in the description box okay so this is important moving on very very important theme from your agriculture economy point of view uh, economy agriculture gs3 both are there in that as well as the issue of environment sustainability so that is also part of it gs3 now we just scrolling actually nothing much so i think next okay after floods big battle for farmers clearing farms of sand transplanting paddy again fine very simple we had good amount of monsoons good amount of very good amount of rain which ultimately led to flooding so farmers had already sowed sowed this is the kharif season so paddy was transplanted now they have to do the ex entire exercise again because the floods spoiled their fields now the big question is do we have adequate time for the cultivation to take place right otherwise winters will start october is the time when the harvest will take place so do we have enough months for the paddy to regrow so this is a matter of food security so just a second yes now we have the news on article 370 supreme court has queries on nature of provisions and power so this is being heard by a five judge bench we are talking about article 370 becoming inoperative and article 370 was in part 21 of the constitution okay so let me first mention what all are the points that the supreme court raised and then we will discuss the overall developments that took place with reference to article 370 so article 370 provided for special status to be given to the state of jammu and kashmir jammu and kashmir was the only state with a separate constitution and this was placed in part 21 of the constitution now the judges over there raised the issue that this provision was temporary transitional and special so it is temporary that it had to change this was a temporary arrangement transitional arrangement that is jammu and kashmir has decided to be part of india 
so the transition period and lastly it is a special provision special arrangement has been made for the state of Jammu and Kashmir so Supreme Court judges are saying that it is already uh, it's mentioned it is temporary transitional and uh, special so this had to go at some point of time while the uh, the person who's challenging is Kapil Sibyl on behalf of Gupkar Alliance not mentioned over here Gupkar Alliance so these are Kashmir political parties who are against the abolition of article 370 so he's saying that this is actually permanent in nature even though it is mentioned in the constitution it is actually permanent in nature as any change to article 370 or should it be there or not was to be made by the constituent assembly of Jammu and Kashmir so which never came into being and that is one thing secondly there was question raised about this being in part 21 of the constitution now here you should know that article 370 is in part 21 and part 21 is not just about article 370 it also includes article 371 369 370 371 371 is a series of articles actually a b c like that so which provides for exemptions to a special status to northeastern states so if you have it over here let me see no i don't have it so yes thirdly the part so first we covered temporary then part 21 and the third one was with reference to article 356 that is when the abolition had taken place or when 370 became inoperative that time the govern that time there was president's rule in the state of jammu and kashmir so president's rule or uh, article 356 was in force so this was used uh, to reinterpret the constitution and changes was made now let us see this over here this writing that i've done so that will make it easy so article 370 was a special status for the state of jammu and kashmir it was to be temporary transitional and special a special provision for jammu and kashmir so this was temporary because the constituent assembly for the state of jammu and kashmir was to decide on the fate of 370 it was only for this this naturally never happened and therefore for all practical purposes it was deemed permanent in fact we had a question in upsc nobody thought that 370 will go away so there was a question in upsc that to what extent this provision of 370 is temporary transitional and special okay so it hence it became permanent now, uh, in 2018, in 2018, uh, the gov gov uh, president's rule was imposed. The governor, using Article 356, uh, brought it into suspended animation. The legislature of the state of Jammu and Kashmir into suspended animation. Suspended animation means that the members retain their seats but they are not able to form a majority for the government so it was on suspended animation and for a very very long period of time so if the government cannot be made you know within six months re-election has to be ordered but this never happened so by doing suspend suspended animation the government lost you see support was not there it wasn't possible also so article 356 was used to bring in president's rule so governor was the overall administrator for the state of jammu and kashmir now in this time article 367 was amended article 367 provides for interpretation of the constitution so 367 was amended which allowed for governor to be interpreted as legislature as legislature for the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Why? Because there is president's rule in force. 
so it the governor was interpreted as legislature and legislature in turn was read as the constituent assembly of jammu and kashmir are you getting it okay now we know that the governor is appointed by the center he is a he is an appointee of the president representative of the president so by that logic the governor is the legislature so the governor is the constituent assembly right and governor is the representative of the president so the president provides for abolition of 370 so through a, through a presidential order article 370 became inoperative and uh, the state of jammu and kashmir becomes a union territory later on we have the reorganization act 2019 which made by with simple by simple majority the state of jammu and kashmir was became a union territory jammu and kashmir was sup supposed to be a union territory with legislature for which we are going to have an election and uh, ladakh was to be without legislature so two uts were made out of the state of jammu and kashmir so you can see the innovativeness over here that has been done so this is this is going to be challenged so 3 356 367 so all of this are going to be challenged over here but in any case uh, it is more or less clear 370 is not coming again nct bill remember nct bill it is with reference to national civil services authority so this was could not be brought up in the parliament our rajya sabha passes jan vishwas jan vishwas bill forest bill forest conservation act and amendment to the forest conservation act and amendment to the mining act so there are three bills actually so i actually thought when i was reading this that, that this is one bill jan vishwas forest and mining bill and it makes sense also if you read it that way okay so this these are three separate bills forest conservation act we have talked enough right some dilutions have been done to forest conservation norms most importantly uh, near border areas uh, permission is not required for removing forests what is of interest is this jan vishwas bill so what is this jan vishwas bill jan vishwas bill provides for it seeks to promote ease of doing business by decriminalizing minor offenses through amendments in 183 provisions of 42 acts so a huge number of uh, laws are being amended for promoting ease of doing business and some of the crimes some of the criminal activities are being deemed as are being decriminalized now i just typed jan vishwas bill and see there are concerns like why lower punishment for sub standard drugs experts are asking right so people who come do business but to engage in unethical activities even they may be protected by this that's why you know these things should go through the legislative deliberations and discussions and then it should be passed most of the times we see the bills are actually pushed and there will be number of more issues right now it is only talking about sub standard drugs you can imagine uh, we had exported some drugs uh, like cough syrup and about 70 or children died because of that so it should not be decriminalized opposition seeks house panel study on data privacy report okay so i was hoping to get more actually over here so there is this report coming from the parliamentary panel the standing committee which is known as citizens data security and privacy report this is nothing but it is a report on the digital personal data protection bill that's all there is no such data as to how much uh, crimes are taking place how much data has been breached nothing like that it is basically about the data protection bill now 
basically the government is saying this report has been come so the government is saying that this is already three times it has gone to the standing committees we cannot delay this the bill should become a law it is very much needed data protection is a very very important thing it should come into force quickly now over here the bill the government hinted certain things about the data protection bill it says that it will ease cross border cross border data flow age of consent for children who want for accessing internet and secondly thirdly exemptions available to be to the center and its agencies this we will cover in the economy section now coming to the editorial page first of all shutdown is no cure right so today i'm not doing it but internet shutdowns and it, its impact is an important theme We've done it multiple times. So today I'm not covering this. Next is nine too many deaths of cheetahs concerns raised by South African and Namibian scientists. These are wake up call government must cheat. So basically what has happened? There was first first time translocation of cheetahs or any species actually. So translocation of cheetahs from Namibia first it took place from Namibia and then from South Africa so they came to they were translocated to India particularly the Kuno National Park in Madhya Pradesh okay. now we keep hearing that cheetahs are dying there is some infection or the other in fact in one year alone 40 percent of the cheetahs have died 40 percent mortality in a year now this thing is being heard in the Supreme Court. Supreme Court is asking the government what are you doing, what is your conduct and over here it also sought the views of the foreign scientists uh, who were part of the project programs uh, implementation, projects implementation. <laughs> so the Namibian and the South African scientists have raised concerns that the management which is dealing with the cheetahs, they do not have scientific training. And secondly, they are saying more appropriate, more appropriate veterinary care should have been given. So these two points are mentioned over here. By the way, just when the cheetah real relocation was there, environmentalists had raised concern and they said the cheetahs may not survive onto this habitat. We nevertheless went ahead with this. So, yes. Okay. The court's questions. This is with reference to Manipur. Right. So here basically um, the Supreme Court is pulling up the union as well as the state about its conduct on the Manipur violence, on its failures, on failure to report the FIRs, the delays that have taken place. So Supreme Court is now come out of its slumber. I would like to put it that way because it is two and a half months afterwards that they are talking about this okay now the important point what i see over here is not the developments right nobody is going to ask you all this but what is important is the relationship between the judiciary legislature and executive the three arms of the government so ideally in an ideal situation executive legislature and judiciary should be equal and they should work in their own respective domain. But in India's case, judiciary has a much higher, you know, although they work in their own independent spheres, judiciary has greater powers. We may not say that judiciary is supreme in a country, uh, but judiciary does have greater powers. And that was that has been deliberately done by the makers of the constitution. For instance, here you can see judiciary is, you know, asking questions to the executive on its conduct on um, on the Manipur issue. Sometimes it looks it reviews laws that are passed by the legislature. Sometimes it says, why are you not doing this? Why are you not bringing in the uniform civil code? So we do see that judiciary does have greater weightage, greater. Uh, you know, the greater strength that has been given to the judiciary. 
so this may be may have been a del deliberate design because when india got independent so we had the legislature and the executive but there was concern that when these two failed to perform their functions judiciary should be able to step in and judiciary is the permanent body thereby you know we see uh, judiciary stepping up either via the doctrine of judicial review which comes in from article 13 which says laws inconsistent with the fundamental rights likewise we have uh, article 32 which provides for right to constitutional remedies by means of public interest litigation so in the famous bhagwati case where public inter uh, public interest litigation came in where interests of the publics public and the underprivileged are taken up by the judiciary proactively and likewise there is an article article 142 which allows for judiciary to enforce an order or a decree by the court supreme court enforcement of decree and orders of the supreme court so judiciary has been given that special position because of the perceived weakness with the executive and legislature the makers of the constitution felt that india is in a fragile state on the on the, on the when india got independent so the, on deliberate purpose they kept this provision where judiciary could step in now moving on to the next article the twain must meet so i'll cover this very briefly this is concerning um, the southern states and the deal limitation now deal limitation is to take place in 2026 this has been announced by Minister, Minister of Home Affairs, Amit Shah. So delimitation is the exercise of delimiting or defining the boundaries of the constituencies. So Article 82 says that after every census, a delimitation should be done to keep in account for changes in population. And that delimitation has to move into separate territorial constituencies, which is Article 170. So Article 82 and Article 170 deal with the issue of delimitation. So after every census, it used to take place. But, you know, with the concerns of population rise, with, you know, states which are having more population rise, they would have gotten greater preference as seats in the Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha are based and in fact even the state legislative assemblies are based on population each seat reflects about 1 million or 10 million of our population so if, uh, if more population is there so obviously more seats will go to that particular state so to you know with the issue of population control etc in the mind so after 1971 there was a freeze that no delimitation would be done. So there was a freeze and eventually there was 84th Amendment Act 2002 which extended this freeze. So presently the constituencies are, you know, are based on the 1971 census. But now we, the freeze is going to get over and we are going to have a new delimitation exercise. Now with this, the southern states are concerned because the southern states have done exceptionally well in the outcomes of education, in economy, uh, as well as with the education of women also. The fertility rate in the southern states have come down. It has, has come down, yes. So as a result, their population has come down vis-a-vis -vis the northern states. So from 24.8% in 1971, the population of southern states has come down to 19.9%. So this implies, this implies that they will get a lesser number of seats in the Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha and therefore their political cloud will come down. Right, so that is the main issue. So rather than being rewarded for good governance, they are being disincentivized. Now here a case has been made of 15th Finance Commission. So they are saying that previously uh, 
the old population data was used but in the 15th finance commission finance commission by the way is a constitutional body which provides for principles as to how allocation of tax resources tax would be devolved from union to the states so how much money from union to states will go and within the states which state will get how much money so this principle is coming from the finance commission so 14th Com finance commission was based on the old data while 15th finance commission said that they will look into the most recent census that that is 2011 census moment they moved to this census the share of southern states in central pool of uh, taxes has come down from 17.9% to 15.8%. So their money has come down as a result of this. So southern states are being disadvantaged. So you need to have just this much is good enough actually the population this thing uh, delimitation 2026 articles. I think that is good enough for you. Next is a question from Joshimath. Joshimath was in news for sinking. The ground is sinking over there. So it is said that because of unchecked developmental activities, the mountains have been hollowed out and mutilated and therefore they have become vulnerable to disasters. So you can see a lot of disasters are taking place, even floods also, landslides and then sinking. Sinking is very very bad. Imagine your house is there and suddenly it's vanishing. It's breaking, it's unfit to live. Now here the author is basically telling us that these developmental projects are not good for Himalayas and the center is downplaying this risk. That's the main thing. I just wanted to say that, right? Okay. So the developmental projects have made mountains unfit for inhabitation for habitation then dams, settlements, tourism, urbanization, hotels, right? So they have made the dams un unfit, uh, sorry, the mountains unfit. In fact, Shimla is having water crisis, right? So in a cool place, cool environment, then they are having water crisis. Okay, next. So the government, she's saying locals are kept in dark. When there is a crisis, lack of effort with reference to rehabilitation, and the government tends to downplay the risk. Now I was thinking and you should also that uh, we have in environment impact assessment. Environment impact assessment means if any project is to come in, uh, so impact on the environment has to be taken into account. This is a statutory obligation by law it is required to be done. But yet we have all these crises. So are we doing the EIA in the right way? That is one issue. So an assessment on the environment impact assessment. And besides EIA, which is not compulsory, is social impact assessment. That if any project is there, what is the impact on the people? So social impact assessment includes environment impact assessment because environment also affects the people. So here surveys uh, of the people should be taken, society should be taken to know how the society is benefited or disadvantaged, those who are living over there. So these two can be looked at from means point of view, GS3. Next we have the international section. Russia strikes Ukraine's Danube port, sending global grain prices higher. So Ukraine had yes, previously said in yesterday's news that they are going to use Croatia's ports on Danube river, Ukraine also is Danube river and this Danube river flows into the Adriatic sea. Now this is, this is, you have to check all this on the map yesterday I showed you. So this is your homework atlas, you have to again refer to it. So they said that we will export the grains from here. So now Russia has attacked this port. We have a news on airspace violation. Poland informs NATO 
that uh, Belarus helicopters have invaded into Poland's airspace. Poland in general is concerned that someday Russia might invade into Poland. So this happened, Poland is eyed by Russia from a very, very, very long time. World Wars, they invaded, they went into Poland. So, yes, Trump indicted for efforts to overturn 2020 election result. If you don't remember, President was Trump, election took place, Trump had lost. So he was trying, he was using unfair means to get himself, to get the election result altered so that it favors the incumbent president who was Trump, which never happened. But uh, using unfair means, he has been charged four times. So three times he, had, he has been pro proved to be guilty. So this we have it from the district court, US district uh, judge Tanya Chutkan. Right? So district level court has looked into this issue. Now coming to the economy section. So this one. Uh, Digital Personal Data Protection Bill 2023 said greater control for center, censorship provision likely. Okay. So first of all, for data, data protection is obviously about data protection, safeguards, and on what grounds data can be taken. For example, for public safety, right, or terrorist data is there or whatever. So for that, obviously, security agency should be able to retrieve data. Now, the data protection bill provides for a data protection board a statutory body so it should be their responsibility to look into the issue as to when this uh, this should be allowed the breach should be allowed the exception should be allowed uh, exception exemption should be given okay but not even when this is their data protection bill uh, board the center is given more powers still the center is given more powers somewhere it is undermining the authority of data protection board and it is giving more powers with reference to exemptions for seeking information information may be with reference to public safety with reference to economic offenses for anything the center can seek information uh, in wake of public interest so that is the first point so in wake of national security uh, relations with foreign governments, maintenance of public orders, information exemptions are there. Then is with censorship. The government may order censorship of some, you know, some content is there on YouTube or something. So that may be brought down. Now, interestingly, this is already there in the IT Act, but yet the government wants it in this law also, Digital Personal Data Protection Bill. By the way, we have seen when censorship is used, for example, farmer issue also. So that thing was taken away. So next. Ease cross-border data flow. That is, this is required for the global economy that we live in. So it makes it easy for the flow cross-border data flows. Okay. Next, it's a very critical uh, observation. Uh, with reference to data protection, we are moving from away from whitelisting to blacklisting approach. So there are these data fiduciaries who take our data. So earlier the approach was to be whitelisting. That is, we say that adequate safeguards are being followed and then we allow or permit them to take data. For example, Facebook, YouTube, etc. So that is the whitelisting approach that the government approves. The government is going for the blacklisting approach, approach wherein everybody has the permission in case of some wrongdoing, then that entity will be blacklisted. So this is like going backwards on data protection. But maybe this is an in interest of permitting uh, small scale startups, which may be requiring data. So maybe in that interest, it has been done. Okay. Last, last one, market falls, markets fall over 1% on weak global queues. Okay, first of all, this article is again part of it only. So the US has been downgraded by credit rating agency known as Fitch. So they have downgraded US on accounts of continued outflow of money, particularly to India. 
rates of foreign portfolio investments, we are hearing that India is getting a lot of money. Then weak economic data such as high inflation, uh, concerns associated with seeking exemptions on debt, debt ceiling negotiations. So because of this, the US has been downgraded from AAA -A -A to AA+. -A this is not important, it's just that I'm telling you how much downgrade has been done. Now besides this, uh, uh, besides this, we have weak economic data from US, Eurozone, China. So this affected the investors' sentiment across the world and the, the overall world markets have been low. Okay. Now Indian uh, fund managers are saying it's a good opportunity to invest in the markets. As nothing major is going to affect India. Now briefly coming to the explained section, I've told you a lot more than what is covered here on article 370. Next is, we have a, we have a fossil of jellyfish. The pro We do hardly ever have a fossil of jellyfish because 95% of it is water. So somehow uh, fossil has been found in Canadian rocks and this belongs to the Cambrian period. Cambrian period. 505 million years old. So that this is Cambrian period. The search for no resistance. So you know electricity, right? So it moves on metal, conductivity of the metal. So if the metal is cooled, cooled too much, then in that case we may have superconductivity, which means zero resistance. So obviously it is very desirable because if there is zero resistance, um, it will be very economical. It will lead to very low transmission and distribution losses. So this is highly desirable. But the problem with superconductivity is that it is at a very, very, very low temperature, close to zero Kelvin. So that is the lowest temperature that we can have for minus 273 degrees Celsius. At best we have is minus 150 degrees celsius so obviously it is not usable in the present times now there are some scientists who say that they have made certain breakthroughs uh, we do not know much about it so most recently and why we talk about this two south korean researchers have posted papers on their ability of bringing in superconductivity at normal room temperature and normal conditions of pressure Uh, how Aadhaar is seeking to use AI to tackle bank payments fraud. Didn't get much actually. I read the entire thing. On, all the thing I've got is this payment on financial crimes reported, the volume of financial crimes reported. So this is uh, 2.62 lakh in cases in 2020-21. It has increased about three times to 6.94 lakh in 2022 this is the only thing that is of interest right so you can use this data so 2.62 and in a year's period it has almost tripled so this is it from today's news analysis